Hello everyone, what is up? It is me, Ewan, from What Culture Star Wars, joined right now by Ben Roy Turner. Hello there. To talk to you today about some cool Star Wars news. What else? We're on the Star Wars channel. Of course we're talking about Star Wars news, Ewan. Good oi. But anyway, there's some more stuff that's come out from the Star Wars archives. Now, you might have missed our video because it went up on What Culture's main channel the other month, but uh, there's a new book called The Star Wars Archives done by Paul Duncan. He did one for the original trilogy a few years ago, and now he's got one that's out now that is on the prequels. And it includes loads of interesting stuff, um, not just in terms of the making of the prequels, but also in terms of George Lucas's original plans for the Star Wars sequel trilogy, before, of course, he departed the project when um, Disney purchased Lucasfilm. But it's very interesting. We've known for a couple of years now some key details about George Lucas's Star Wars sequels, what they would have involved, what they would have revolved around, and of course, as well, Lucas's um, slight frustration that Disney didn't take on board as many of his suggestions as he would have liked. But now we actually know why he sold um, Lucasfilm to, to, to Disney and it isn't just a case of we want more money um, it's actually it's really quite sweet so obviously in this book Duncan actually gets the chance to interview George Lucas um, and Lucas reveals um, the reason why he didn't he, he ended up you know selling Lucasfilm <clears throat> was because he was having a daughter at the time and trilogies take it took him 10 years to do all of the prequels so he was working on Fat Menace in 1995 and then concluded it all with Revenge of the Sith in 2005. That's a whole decade. So um, in this interview, you know, um, Duncan mentions, so if you started in 2012, which is when the initial conversations regarding the sequel trilogy were taking place, he wouldn't have finished until 2022. And um, I'm just going to read verbatim what Lucas says here because I find it really interesting. He says, <clears throat> I'd still be working on episode 9 in 2012, and I, um, oh no, I'd still be working on episode 9 in 2012, I was 69, so the question was, am I going to keep doing this the rest of my life? Do I want to go through this again? Finally, I decided I'd rather raise my daughter and enjoy life for a while. I could, have, I could have not sold Lucasfilm and gotten somebody to run the productions, but that isn't retiring. On The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, I tried to stay out of the way, but I couldn't. I was there every day, even though the people were friends of mine and they did great work. It wasn't the same as me doing it, it was like being once removed. I knew that probably wouldn't work again and that I'd be frustrated. I'm one of those micromanager guys and I can't help it, so I figured I would forego that, enjoy what I had, and I was looking forward to raising my daughter. Also, I wanted to build a museum, which is quite nice, <laughs> which I'd always wanted to do, so I was thinking, if I don't do this now, I'll never get that done. I've spent my life creating Star Wars, 40 years, which is a very long time, and giving it up was very, very painful, but it was the right thing to do. I thought I was going to have a little bit more to say about the next three because I'd already started them, but they decided they wanted to do something else. Things don't always work out the way you want, life is like that. So. A slightly bittersweet kind of revelation going on there, you know, in terms of Lucas's obvious attachment to Star Wars. I mean, it is his entire brainchild, you know, he stayed with that franchise for 40 years, like he just said there. Um, but it is sort of bittersweet. It's nice, you know, it's nice to know that he got to the opportunity to relax, because I think he deserved to relax after all the work he'd done and, you know, spend some quality time with his family. Um, but how do, how do you feel about this, Ben Roy? Yeah, I, you can see, like, I'm trying to work it out in my brain now at what age did he have a child as well, because it also seems quite late. I mean, to uh, you got to think that when he would have finished it in, in 2022, did he say? Yeah, like, yeah, he wouldn't have been finished in 2022. Like, you've got almost exactly like, like, no time left, and sure, it's three odd films in, like, say, 10 years. Some people are like, oh, but you can get a film out every year in certain franchises but that's because that's got a swath like a wave a, plat a platoon of people on it the whole time that they can sort of get that thing done and yeah it, it just being like just be i think anyone who creates something can like sort of like uh relate in the sense that like you're doing something you kind of obsess over it and there's no it's always at the forefront of your mind even when you're sort of switching off because you never really switch off for these sort of things and when you've made one of the most popular if the most popular biggest thing in entertainment in the world with star wars especially in like the nerd genre then you're not going to um you ask him in the back of your mind and he's always going to be thinking about it so yeah it's uh, the only thing i probably 
feel bad about it. I, I well, said nearly anything, but I feel kind of feel bad that like Disney did ditch a lot of his ideas. It kind of feels mm-hmm. like say, um, oh, what you saying? Uh, get out the door. Go away. Go. Go. Sort of thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. get away, you old man. <laughs> and um, yeah, I th- yeah, I think it's a shame. Uh, I won't cut you off. You can keep going. <laughs> yeah, that was. I think I was just ending there with a cough. But mm. uh, yeah, it, I would have been interested to see what he would have done. Like, I mean, yeah, I'd be interested to see that even even if. Uh, even if anything, really, like, you always want to see what would the Lucas take be, and I always wonder would he ever come back to like say, could he could he eventually come back and do like a show, or do, do an a... episode of The Mandalorian? That yeah. would be sweet. Or do an, do a just do a single film, just do one, mm-hmm. like a like a Rogue One, he sort of like one and done. But the, then, like you said, like, once he's done that, does he get the taste again, and can he not get it out of his brain? And he's going to be off building his museum, so you know, yeah. let him do that and let him sit on his ranch as he watches the museum be built. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a few years ago, I was kind of stressing over the danger that people were typecasting George Lucas as quote unquote, like crazy old George, you know, he's the guy who came up with all these insane ideas for the prequels. I like the prequels, so I I don't necessarily vibe with that kind of stereotype. And there was that worry as well when, you know, initially at the time when Disney said that they weren't going to be taking Lucas on to, you know, consult on the new Star Wars films or whatever. There was kind of a sense, I thought, from people being like, oh, thank God. But I feel as though it's, it's really sad, but people kind of tend to underestimate just how much obviously Lucas brought to that to that franchise in terms of creating the mythos and yes of course we know he didn't direct all the original trilogy yeah um but I do think there has been a tendency in recent times to really kind of understate his contributions to the thing he created which is wild you wouldn't really see that with any other kind of you know um franchise or characters or whatever and it is a shame but I hope that currently people are beginning to reappraise you know lucas's twilight years as a filmmaker and understand that he still had exciting ideas and i think the testament here as well is you know when we we talked about the other month about his plans for the sequel trilogy and how they were going to involve darth maul running a crime syndicate and you know leia's role and stuff like that Lucas's, yeah. you know, ideas are still being utilised elsewhere in the canon. Um, the whole Darth Maul crime syndicate thing ended up being a major component of the Clone Wars TV show, which he obviously co-created alongside the likes of Dave Filoni and stuff. Um, and on paper, obviously, where, whatever you you hear about that hasn't get hasn't been made is always going to sound slightly more exciting than what you you can see and is tangible and you could hold. Which is why you know so many people were kind of enraptured by the leaked scripts for Duel of the Fates and Colin Trevorrow's yeah. episode 9. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's clear that there is still a large amount of creativity with Lucas. And I hope, you know, I, my mind goes back to that image that was doing the rounds the other day of him on the set of The Mandalorian cradling Grogu. Like, I hope he gets one more Star Wars thing to do because I think that would be the perfect end rather than it being a case of he sold Lucasfilm and was and was slightly, you know, aggrieved that they didn't end up coming back to him for advice on the new series of films. I, I hope there is at least one more project that he can get into and really make that his like, you know what, that's me with Star Wars. I've said my piece. Um, I, I don't know what you think. I think Lucas for a bit of direction would be perfect like to come back into yeah. because like the, we, we all know like the, the prequels, he basically was the master controller. Yeah, he, no one would like sort of tell him no sort of thing. So that like that's why some bits uh, for by the wing seller. I love the prequels as well, but there are also bits like yeah, like do I ever really want to watch Attack of the Clones again? I was sort of thing like <laughs> maybe I'll watch it from the Obi Django fight and go from there sort of thing. You know, like mm-hmm. things like that. And then like with the Disney one where it, we feel like there's all these rumors of like things weren't planned and rushed. And I feel like we're now getting into not course correction, but we get into an era where like there's more thought. There's the, the people are taking it slower. And if mm-hmm. we combine there's a clear plan, yeah, if we if we combine that with a directed Lucas, like Luke, they, the, uh, also like when you're the overall creator, you're directing, you're writing, you're thinking about how this looks, you're going in and you're picking what the model looks like. You split over so much. There's only so, only, there's only so much butter for so much bread. If you spread it too thin, you're not gonna, it's all gonna, it's just not gonna be a good sandwich, is it? So I no. think that this could be, like, I, I, I would like to see, see Lucas uh, have one more stab and like you can see his ideas I think his ideas always had merit. I just think they were either taken a bit in the wrong direction or just spread yeah. too thin or just 
you know, like with the, with uh, I think Rahul Rahul Kohli, I think uh, that's how Kohli's how mm-hmm. pronounced his second mm-hmm. name. Uh, he uh, tweeted slash Instagram the other day like uh, the Clone Wars is the best 2.0 patch to the prequels <laughs> yeah. ever, and like it improved it, and that, that's got merit. And you see, I I think it's always like there's always circumstances, and I feel like the circumstances might be right. When Lucas feels like he's had enough, I mean, when he feels like he's had enough time for his daughter, I mean, like one off, a one-off film isn't ten years. A one-off film <laughs> is like two, something like that. So, you know, if he can, if he can fit it around his life, then fine. But if not, just sit and retire, Lucas, and never get Twitter. Like, just don't ever do it to yourself. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think of all the filmmakers, he, he deserves, <laughs> he deserves a nice, happy retirement. But yeah, I want to know what you all think of George Lucas leaving Star Wars behind down in the comments below. Are you a little bit upset that he never got the chance to make the sequels or was it ultimately the right decision? Once done that, please be sure to go back to whatculture.com for more news lists and articles like this every single day. And also, of course, to subscribe to What Culture Star Wars if you haven't already. The content is coming thick and fast. We've got coverage of The Mandalorian and all other sorts of stuff in the pipeline. But as ever, I have been Ewan. You can catch me on Twitter if you want to, at Ewan Ruins Things. And you can follow Ben Roy, twi- ben Roy Twitter. That's your new name, Ben God. Roy Twitter. What's your Twitter? handle uh obi roy kenobi no uh ben returner <laughs> why isn't obi roy kenobi not your twitter handle i don't know it's just like if this was a lord of the rings channel i'd be benamir but you know and there we go goodbye <laughs>